Good afternoon. It's lovely to have so many smiling faces here today. My name is Tori Parlin, and I am on behalf of the Board of Trustees. I want to welcome you to this unique and wonderful celebration. A celebration of and thanksgiving for the completion of the mission of Chatfield College and the rebirth of that mission as the Chatfield Edge. This transition has been a very thoughtful collaboration between the board, the staff, and the Ursuline sisters. Many individuals have contributed heart and soul to the creation and perpetuation of the Chatfield mission. And we are fortunate to have several of them here this afternoon who will share with us their experiences and perspectives. Before we proceed with the program, I would like to ask the trustees to stand and be recognized for their dedication and hard work. <laughs> Once again, I'd like to welcome you to this special occasion and thank you for coming to share this with all of us. At this point, I will ask Father Bernard Weldeshofer, Dean of the St. Mary Deanery, to begin the program with a prayer. Good afternoon, everyone. Certainly good to be with all of you today. Um, let us remember that the Lord has taught us where two or three are gathered, he's truly present among us, so we thank the Lord for his presence among us this day. St. Angel Angela Marici once said, do something, get moving, be confident, risk new things, stick with it, get on your knees, then be ready for big surprises. We do not know what God has in store for us, what big surprises lay before us. But we do know that it is good to be a people of prayer. And so we begin our celebration today with prayer. And so let us pray. God of all goodness, you are with us in every transition and change. As we enter this new air with excitement and even with some anxiety, we recall your deep compassion, your presence, and your abiding love. We give you thanks for the life of St. Angela Marici, as she was generous and joyful in answering your call and happily shared the gift she had been given. When she recognized the need for education, she overcame obstacles and prejudices by prayer and was committed to teaching and serving those living in poverty. Open our eyes to the needs of others and help us to always serve our sisters and brothers and to bring joy to those around us. We thank you for the ministry of the Ursulines of Brown County. From the very early days of this archdiocese, they have empowered others and have served as healers as they interact with the chaos of our changing world. We thank you for Chatfield College this liberal arts institution of higher learning that has served this community so well for five decades. We thank you for the gifts, the talents, and skills with which you have blessed us. We thank you for the experiences that have brought us to this moment. And we thank you for the work of others that gives breath and depth to our own work open our hearts to big surprises, and be with us as we move forward, rejoicing with you and supporting one another in all that we do. We ask this in your holy name as we pray to gather the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. It is so 
Great to see you all here, friends of Chatfield. My name is David Hessen, and for the last few years, I have been the Associate Dean and Site Director here at the St. Martin campus. I am now currently the Interim Executive Director of the Chatfield Edge. So uh, it is my privilege to be here today and welcome you as we celebrate Chatfield College and as we move forward into our new endeavor. Um, today you're going to hear from a lot of different people, a lot of different perspectives as Tori said, and I am excited for you to hear them. They have great things to say. So first off, to start us off, we worked with our Digital Media Partners 2060 Digital Media to create a retrospective video that shows where we've been and a little bit about where we are going. And that's how we're going to start off today. You're going to see some some really great things in this video. When I entered the Ursulines of Brown County at age 18, I became a student at the Ursuline Teacher Training Institute, which is a precursor of Chatfield. And very soon after that, it evolved into the southern campus of Ursuline College in Cleveland in order to have a more secure accreditation. And then right after I left and transferred to Xavier University, it became Chatfield College. So that was 1971 when Chatfield College was born. And response to the people of the area who asked, can we have a college for us? Because when I came, the college was only for novices of the Ursuline sisters and of the Franciscan brothers. And so all of us intended to be teachers, but the people of the area really wanted a college for their needs. And uh, the answer was yes. And that's how Chapel College was born. Uh, like Ursuline Academy and Ursuline College and all the other Ursuline ministries is founded on the vision of St. Angela where every person matters and each person has something to offer. I think the one of the special things about Chatfield was just size and the ability to um, get to know students and help them one-on-one, -on -one. students who probably needed help that Chatfield could provide that bigger schools couldn't. Since I've been here nine years, and I've worked at a lot of other colleges, this, was, this place is different. I felt like every day I was able to help someone somehow, and so it's been very rewarding from that perspective uh, for me to be able to reflect on the accomplishments that we've helped students uh, achieve uh, through their hard work and determination. I think Chatfield has definitely impacted the community for adult learners and CCP students who are able to get their associate's degree before finishing high school. I think it's an incredible opportunity and also Chatfield's different events that they have, like the Nun Run, which I re actually did this past year. Um, I think it's very beneficial for the entire community. Chatfield changed my life in school and outside of school, but mostly outside of school because people identify me as a college student. It changed my life, like, financially. I mean, I went through some hardship and Chatfield College really helped me get out of my hardship and uh, stuck with me, made sure I kept coming to school. I thank God for that. A lot of uh, kids that, that wouldn't otherwise go to college felt comfortable coming here. And uh, I think that if it hadn't been for this college, a lot of them would not have attended college at all. I'm in my 40s. <laughs> And if it wasn't for Chatfield, I wouldn't have the confidence at 40 to achieve all that I can achieve. So I want to motivate my three daughters to come to Chatfield so they can get a good education as well. My, my fondest memories are of the students, of engaging them on a day-to-day -day basis, on um, shaking their hands at graduation, at seeing them uh, develop and evolve, some of them coming in very shy, lacking confidence, and having the knowledge and the ability to go on and do great things. I'm definitely gonna cherish the friends that I made here, spending some time after classes, talking with professors, the relationships that I've built here are very important to me. Little things that I used to let worry me, I don't, because I'm in a better place now, so I don't have to worry about those things. Um, Chatfield became my other family. 
So I'm actually a first generation college graduate. So that in itself is amazing. Um, and it has really kickstarted my career. The facility here really helped me to gain control of my um, degrees as well. I was a painfully shy teenager. Um, so Chatfield was the perfect jumping off point. It was small um, and it allowed me to grow at my pace. Chatfield Edge will support uh, students attending any post-secondary uh, institution. So it doesn't necessarily have to be college. It could be a trade school, it could be a uh, certificate program, uh, anything that they aspire to do. So that opens up the area of interest that we can help people with. When we were college, we were just limited to what we did. Now we, we say, we really don't care where you're going to college or post-secondary education, whatever you want to do. You might want to be a truck driver, you might want to be a carpenter. But if you need help and support and, and how to figure out how to get that done, and uh, maybe you need some coaching and mentoring along the way, uh, maybe you need some funding, some gap funding along the way, we're interested in helping you. It was so inspirational to see how we interact with our students. When we say we meet them where they are, we really do. It's not a judgment-based sessions. It's really about a collaboration with helping them. My mentor is very, very nice, polite. I mean, I've seen big things happen with Elizabeth. Um, she graduated. She's now at a school, running an after-school program for the kids that she loves in the community. My mentor, I love her, and we're always gonna be friends. Oh, I love you too. I'm so <laughs> glad I helped you graduate. So, Chaffield Edge, in many ways is like coming full circle. When the Ursuline Order, the Company of St. Ursula, Company of St. Angela was founded, it was founded with the idea of each person finding his or her own potential. And so the early Ursulines discerned where was that need? And it was not in schools, it was in the cities and the villages and the parishes and it was supporting families and it was helping them to grow in their education but it was not formally in a building that we now know of as a school or as a college and so to see that Chatfield College is evolving into a support system for people who don't know what their path is and finding ways to help each person discern what's the best fit for them is totally grounded in the vision of St. Angela. We thank the community for allowing Chatfield College to carry on the 177 year mission of the Brown County Ursulines, making a real difference in the lives of the students by empowering them to make the most of their abilities. Although the college chapter is closing, Chatfield's educational legacy will continue in St. Martin and the greater Cincinnati community for many years to come with the Chatfield Edge, a support system for those dreaming of an education. It is a future full of hope and promise. It is a future that starts now. I'm sure many of you saw lots of people you knew in that. A young Denny Kiley slipped in there. I don't know if you noticed that in his cool cable neck sweater. Um, it was really great. Kelly and I got to go through tons of uh, photographs. Sister Patricia helped as well. Uh, lots of, of footage and things to go through. Uh, and it was really a, a, a privilege. And we had these great interviews with the past presidents that you saw portions of. Uh, there were much longer interviews that we had with them. And they had so much to share that we just thought it would be really uh, great for them to come back and share with you live. So we invited the three of them to share with us today as part of the program. Uh, the first of those is Sister Ellen Doyle. She was president of Chatfield from 1986 to 1997, the longest serving president of the college. So I'm going to invite her up to speak. Thank you, thank you, David. Thank you all for coming. What a great community we have here. Many of us a little grayer than the last time, but never, nevertheless, uh, full of mixed feelings. 
certainly joy that Chatfield's dream and Chatfield's legacy is going to continue, as well as um, grief over this part of the story is over, but every story lives on and on and on, and I have um, a couple stories I want to share with you as I reflect on Chatfield. The first one was told to me by Jim Stengel, who was the first board member from Procter & Gamble, and he came into my office and he said, you'll never believe what happened in the committee meeting that we just had. It was the last meeting of the Mission and Purposes Committee, and there were about six or eight people on that committee, one of which was a soon-to-graduate graduate student. Lori was a typical student at the time. She was 32. She was raising two teenage children on her own, and she was really, really, really shy, like Amelia described herself as shy. And at the last meeting, Jim asked every person to speak before they finished their work. And her, what she said was, who's going to see this? Who's going to see this mission and purposes for Chatfield College? And Jim says, Jim was in marketing at Procter & Gamble, he says, well, the whole world, this is, this is our face to the world. And she says, if anybody like me sees it, they will not come. And he says, what? <laughs> you know, they had meet, been meeting for months. It had the phrase, Chatfield serves bright and capable students. She says, I know I'm bright and capable, but I wouldn't have known that before I came. And if I saw those words, I would have, I would have decided this was not the college for me. Jim took that story to Procter & Gable and it lives on in, in the legacy at Procter & Gable's marketing resources about how to listen to the people that you're serving. And uh, he, he, he was proud that he listened well enough that she felt confident to speak. But the question I was reflecting on was where did her confidence come from? How did she in that last semester have the confidence that, that enabled her to ask that question? which was such a critical question and led that committee to take those words out, not because Chatfield doesn't serve bright and capable students, but because they needed to tell the story of Chatfield in a way that people who, who uh, perhaps might not have thought of themselves as bright and capable would still want to come. I think maybe confidence comes from three places at Chatfield, very different from other colleges it seems, and Robin spoke in the, in the video of how at age 40 she came to uh, Chatfield and came out with confidence. The question is what comes before the confidence? And I am, in my reflection, I go back to my first week here at Chatfield as president and meeting Michael Maloney, who was the founder of the Urban Appalachian Council, who preceded when he was on the faculty at, at Chatfield and also a community organizer in the area, he proceeded to mentor me in, in the rural and urban Appalachian community and their particular valuing of kinship. And he helped me to understand that kinship does not, is not limited to who are your relatives. It's a much bigger concept but at Chatfield, he said it was his experience that Chatfield was a place where kinship was honored. And certainly Sister Xavier Ladrigan, my predecessor, uh, demonstrated that when I, when I followed her around for my first, before I became president, I got to follow her for three months to learn how to be a college president. And wherever I went, we would run into somebody that she taught in first grade. <laughs> and they would say, she's my teacher. And it gave me the sense that this leadership at Chatfield College was about knowing people's families and knowing their stories and, and helping them to feel at home as they would in their own families. And as luck would have it, uh, when I first became president at Chatfield, Virginia Kiley was the librarian and Tulane Barber was the business manager. Tulane's here and Virginia's son Denny is here. But I don't know how many relatives of the Barbers and the Hawks and the Kileys are here, but there's a lot, <laughs> a, 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 a lot of relatives. But, but the most important thing about Virginia and Tulane was that they 
treated every student that they met, whether in the library or in the business office, as though they were their families. And uh, both Virginia and, and Tulane had wonderful spouses that respected them and encouraged them and loved them uh, as women in leadership at, in this college. And it spilled over into the students, that sense of kinship. The second quality I think that, that, that Michael told me also, this is a research quality about urban and rural Appalachian people, is the, is the quality of beauty. And most of the students when they, when they many of the students, I, I don't know if most, but many of the students when they wrote their graduation essay that was, that was uh, read at their graduation about their story of how they came here, talked about coming down the front lane uh, those who came to St. Martin. The beauty of, of this place, this land, these trees, and for those who came to St. Martin, uh, the St. Martin campus, that beauty of, of this campus was clearly a part of their feeling at home and, and their coming to see the beauty in themselves. Certainly, as John Tafaro led uh, Chatfield in building the beautiful place that the, the Over the Rhine campus became with its uh, beautiful modern um, colors and lines and spaces. Certainly that would be true for, for people who came to that uh, space as well. But Sister Agatha and I had a conversation, I still remember where, when I was stand, where I was standing when we said this. We wondered if Chatfield's curriculum, which required that every student take a class in the arts, uh, was having an impact that, that beyond anything that we imagined. Because what we noticed was that almost all the students dreaded taking an art class. <laughs> and they dreaded taking a theater class. And they dreaded taking a music class. And so they saved it to their last semester. And so Sister Agatha and I noticed that it was during the last semester that we began to notice that students stood taller. Students spoke with direct eye contact to each other and to us. Students had a different kind of inner beauty and confidence. And, and we were determined to get some graduate student at Xavier or UC or somewhere to do research on it. We never got around to it. But we did believe that, that the experience of being in a beautiful place and taking art was part of the discovery of the inner beauty that each person uh, comes to know by virtue of being here at, at, at Chatfield College. I don't think very many students knew that Julia Chatfield herself was an artist. Um, I did bring a little work of art of Julia Chatfield's and put it over in the reception. So if you want to see her art, you'll be able to see it at, at the reception. But uh, she was not only an artist who, who believed in beauty herself, but she combined that artist, artistry and, and uh, love for beauty with her pioneer spirit. Which brings me to the third quality, which uh, I call courage. You can't be a pioneer without be having courage. And, and, and certainly Julia Chatfield, uh, when she stepped on the boat from France, coming to the New World without knowing where she would be or exactly what the circumstances were, and trusting that uh, all would be well and God would be with her and she would be led, is, um, is a significant step in her life that gave her the confidence that she had to lead this new community um, here in Brown County. And I remember, I remember interviewing a young man who came for a scholarship interview, and I always ask the question, why did you come to Chatfield College? And he, he gulped, and he wasn't sure he <laughs> knew how to answer that question. And he said, well, my younger sister came here after high school, and she's making twice as much as I am, and I get my hands dirty. And I think I might want to go somewhere so where I can learn some things that give me more choices than just manual work. 
And he had the courage to say that out loud and, uh, in his, one of his early encounters at Chatfield, and he went on to graduate and become the second person in his family who, um, who went here. And my favorite, favorite courage story is the four uh, Chatfield graduates who, who, were, who then became um, administrative assistants at Chatfield, one of them is here, they were charged with coming up with a, a new plan for the, staff, the staffing at Chatfield as we were growing. We were growing dramatically. And I convinced the administrative team to let these four, four graduates of Chatfield who were administrative assistants come up with the proposal. So they went away and they came back with the proposal and uh, they came to me and laid it all out. And I said, this is great except for this one part of it. And they said, well, why, why don't you like that part? And I, 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 I trusted them enough in confidence to give them my reasons, my true reasons for why I didn't think that part would work. So they went away and they came back two weeks later and they had the exact same plan and they had all the reasons why I should change my mind. <laughs> and and um, what that was for me was an experience that they had confidence in me. They not only had confidence in themselves, but they had confidence in me. And, and, and not only from their experience of Chatfield as a student, but Chatfield as an employee and being trusted with important work. So um, I think those three qualities, kinship, beauty, and courage, are going to be essential as we go forth in Chatfield Edge. Um, I think no matter how these people who are going to be served by Chatfield Edge uh, come to us or how we come to them, it's going to somehow be in a community of support. And there's going to be a relationship there that, that builds that community of support. Always for people who, who need help in, in imagining the next dream, what, what the challenge is, is seeing the, the dream within themselves and recognizing the beauty within themselves. And then finally, courage one step at a time to, um, to have the confidence that with one step, just taking one step, the next step will be revealed, like Julia Ch Chatfield who put her foot on the boat not knowing uh, where she was going to step off the boat and, and, and take those next steps. So my prayer is that all of these graces that have been with us for these 51 years continue to grace Chatfield Edge and uh, make this legacy continue to be alive and well in our community. Thank you. Thanks, Sister Ellen. I was really hoping I had said to someone, and you put it in, and we did not talk about it, but the story with the mission statement, I said, oh, it was too long for the video, but it's the, be it's the best story, I'm, and I wish she could say it. And then she did, because she's great. Um, so students, as we have alluded to, have always been the heart of Chatfield, and we definitely wanted to hear from them today, so we invited some alumni to come and speak. First up is Arniqua Lester, who is from our very most recent December 2022 graduating class, the final graduating class uh, of Chatfield. So we invited her today to come and speak. So come on up and share with us. So glad to have you here. Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for having me. And my name is Arniqua Lester. I am truly honored to be here before you to be able to tell my side of the story here at Sheffield College. Um, my time at Sheffield College was wonderful. I had recently lost my mom. And after losing my mom, I had lost my passion for school. Um, I had lost myself. I was confused on what I want to do anymore. But attending Sheffield College, it has changed me. It was a truly eye opener for me. Um, although it had its roller coaster, it was it had its up and down moments. Um, attending it, it has helped me on a personal level. Um, it helped me enhance my relationship with um, my peers and others. I'm not normally an open person. I'm very quiet and keep to myself. So Chatfield has helped helped me open up to everyone. 
Um, the teachers and the staff focus on empowering individuals to better their self, their future, and their goals, and honestly, that's what they did with me. Um, I was able to build up the courage to believe in myself and not sway the opinion of others to go after my dreams. Currently, I am attending Mount St. Joseph for my bachelor's degree into a social worker, and then I also received the job at the Lighthouse of Youth, which was my overall dream goal, just growing up just to work there, and I just recently got the job there. So on behalf of myself and the students, I'd like to express my gratitude to all the teachers, their parents, family members, and faculty members who helped us on our journey. And I can honestly say I'm proud of myself, and I can't wait to see what the future holds for everyone, including me. Thank you. I mean, okay. I'll just let her take over the whole thing. See, it's terrific. Um, thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming today. It means a lot to us that you were here. So as we have alluded to also, music and the arts have always been really important at Chatfield. And many of you know of Sister Cecilia Huber and her work in music and the way she championed it with the students and in the community, uh, which was very inspirational to a lot of us. Um, so we want to celebrate that today. We also want to thank, it's mentioned in your program, the Ohio Arts Council and the Lulu O'Craig Fine Arts Fund for helping support this ceremony today. Um, so to recognize that, we have uh, James Wiederhold, who's a member of the community. Everybody has, uh, many of you from this area have heard of the Wiederhold family name. Uh, and James studied and played with Sister Cecilia and has been uh, gracious enough to come and play our beautiful Roosevelt organ today. You heard him before the, the service and he will also be playing afterwards. Um, and he has taken some of Sister Cecilia's work and is going to share that with you. So uh, he has a piece today together with Angela that he's gonna play for us now. Also, the songs uh, directly before the service and directly after the service are also pieces of Sister Cecilia's that he has done as well. So uh, you'll hear that also. And he put this together for, for us today. Uh, together with Angela by our beloved Sister Cecilia Huber is today's featured song. The joyful melody and uplifting lyrics are sure to be with you for days to come, and they read, together, united in one heart and will, we glorify your name, sing his praise and glory to him forever. While Sister Cecilia wrote dozens of wonderful works, her words in this anthem really speak. As Chatfield College transitions to the Chatfield Edge, together with Angela, we are united in prayer and hopefulness for the future. We give praise to him for his guidance and all that is to come.
The following speaker really doesn't need very much of an introduction. <laughs> if you've been around in the last 20 years, you know, you know what's coming. So John Tafero was president of Sheffield College from 2009 to 2019, and he is coming to share with us now. Also, we have this for you, too, in case oh, you okay. need something. The OSC yeah. over-under. <laughs> I'm not going to. I knew there'd be an over-under on that. Big dreams come true here. When I first arrived in 2009, one of the first projects we embarked upon as a community was to come up with fashion one tagline or one slogan. I went through and looked at all the brochures and saw um, start here, go anywhere, great place to start. I think even uh, Cincinnati's best kept secret, that's, that one I didn't like at all. Um, but um, we ended up engaging a man named Jerry Galvin to help us uh, come up with a tagline. And Jerry was uniquely equipped for this project. He was not only the most um, well-respected uh, creative mind in Cincinnati uh, advertising history, uh, but he also had an Ursuline heart, as the Ursulines would describe. He uh, was married to Robin, who was a, a member of the community. Um, so he, and he was also free. And we didn't have the money to pay 2060 back then. The requirement, I would call Jerry up and say, I need you to help with this, we need to do this. And by the way, we don't have any money for you. And he was fine. So we embarked on this project and did a lot of focus groups. We had pizzas with the president and community coffees, and, and uh, Jerry helped us come up with this uh, big dreams come true here. I was so happy to, to hear Arniqua uh, say that she's achieved her dream uh, working at Lighthouse. Um, because Jerry, the way Jerry described it, you know, everybody has or should have big dreams, and what's big for one may not be big for someone else, but they're still big dreams to them. And we had students whose big dream was to be able to be successful enough to make a car payment so that they could have their own car. And then we had, we had one student whose big dream was to be president of the United States. And um, if I, I keep following Hunter, and he's probably still you know, on track to do that. I wouldn't sell him short. But no matter what your dream is, it's a big dream for you. But we also, we had to we had to make sure students had these dreams. So you know, the first challenge was to get them to have a dream and a big dream, um, and then help them achieve it. So you know, so much is repeated here. I, I, I saw uh, Robin and Zoe and, and listened to Arniqua, and these themes keep recurring. Our, our, our roles as presidents, so many of the same, we were separated by many years, but had the same experience. And, and my recollection of big dreams coming true revolves around students. So social media is a great thing. It's a terrible thing in some respects, but it's a great thing because you can follow people and see people, and I can still communicate with graduates. I, I, I see posts from Emily Scott from over the Rhine who, who really you know, dreamed for safety and security um, for her and her family, and she had a dream to be a um, be in the childcare business, and she has a very, very successful childcare center, uh, and she's just done incredibly well. Uh, Diamond Bradford uh, wanted to be, her dream, um, Arniqua, was to be a, a mental health counselor. She went on and got a bachelor's, then a master's from Lindsay Wilson, and today she's a clinical mental health counselor. Uh, Sacconi Hughes, I, I still talk to Sacconi, Sacconi was a uh, great big guy who was a high school football star. And Sacconi went to college on a football scholarship at St. Francis University in Fort Wayne, Indiana. And he was a wonderful football player. Only problem was he never went to class. And he ended up being back home with his tail between his legs working for UPS. But he had big dreams and he had ambitions. He had a young son and he found Chatfield and we were lucky to find him. Uh, he was a successful student. He worked in the admissions office. He went on to UC and got a bachelor's and got a master's in NK, NKU, Northern Kentucky University. 
And Sacconi just called me recently because he was in line for even a bigger job at UC. Uh, the sky is the limit uh, for Sacconi. Uh, out here, we had students that have big dreams. I remember Martin Smith. And Martin can be a little controversial if you follow him on, on, uh, on social media. Martin came to us out of high school, uh, Highland County, uh, I believe, and things didn't work out. And uh, Martin got married and he had a series of jobs and then he got divorced and then he lost his job and he thought it should be time to, to come back to Chatfield. And he did as an adult in his 30s. And his first big dream was to uh, get on the dream, dean's list, which he did. And then he upped his, his dream and he wanted to uh, um, get straight A's and he accomplished that too. And then uh, I got word that we had this student that wanted to transfer to an Ivy League school. And I sat down with Martin and he told me about his, his dream. And there were skeptics, there were skeptics here, there were faculty members here who said, Martin, you're a kid from Appalachia, you don't have any money, that's ridiculous, you can't go to an Ivy League school. <sighs> How much time before I started crying? And Martin, uh, Martin did it. Martin went to Penn, University of Pennsylvania, and uh, got a, he's got several masters, he's written a half a dozen books, and uh, today he's a faculty member at a community college in Northern Kentucky uh, teaching creative writing. Um, Anthony Taronis was in the video. So Anthony's dream was to go to Shawnee State. He was accepted at Shawnee State. And we had started a, a fast break program where we got students who were supposed to go to another school in the fall and they could come here in the summer and get a couple of credits. We really weren't supposed to be stealing them from those schools, but sometimes that's the way it worked out. Because Anthony was here and he was happy, and then he got his bill from Shawnee State. And he said, you know, why do I want to do that? I, I, I'm, ha I'm happy here at Chatfield. So Anthony stayed here, and he went on and he worked in the admissions office here. You saw him giving the tour in that video. And uh, um, he, is, he is still working at admissions now at UC and he works with international students in their online recruitment. So he told me he not only gets to work with students from all over the country, he gets to work with students from all over the world. He also had another dream, he wanted to meet someone and have a family, and he met his wife here, Rob, uh, Robin, uh, Bethany, I'm sorry, and they've been married for a year, so uh, that was great. So we keep seeing these themes over and over again, and. And I, I, I see Cheryl here and, and uh, uh, Mary Jacobs on the video. David Powell is here. We also have this recurring theme of, of shy people that have come out of their, their shell. Uh, David was so, was so shy. He's still shy. But David has done a great, great job uh, here with our facilities. And um, um, all the people who, who, who went to school here and then worked here, there are many of them. I can't mention all of you. But thank you all for, for coming and for, and for committing to Chatfield. So we all have dreams. I had dreams, too. I remember driving up the, uh, driving up the driveway and seeing St. Angela Hall. And I thought, wow, that's a cool building. And Sister Agatha and Sister Cecilia were living there. And then when they decided to move to Brescia, uh, through the generosity of these Ursulines and, and the others, uh, we were able to acquire uh, first lease and then acquire that building and make it a really neat college building. Uh, I had a dream about, about over the Rhine, and, and we were in the rented facility in uh, uh, St. John's Social Service Center, and thought, you know, we really ought to have our own building down here. And the board bought in, and the donors bought in, and, and we did have a state-of-the-art, wonderful campus. And I had a dream for the, the library that, uh, where we could eliminate that horrible garage, which was the smoking room, and uh, created that addition that just looks like it's always been there now. I mean, it just looks so great. And then the Welcome Center where we're going to see and, and all those dreams. And that's just the, that's just the physical part of the dreams. Um, I ended up um, wanting, so dreams don't always come true. We have to adjust. Part of my dream for this campus was an amphitheater over in the northeast corner um, and where there's uh, basically uh, vegetation. But I wanted that, I wanted that there because I wanted to do an outdoor graduation. 
Uh, this is the, a sensational place. It got a little hot in here and sometimes in May. And we also outgrew it for graduation at a time where we couldn't fit everybody in here. We had to issue tickets. So I thought having an amphitheater would be cool. But somebody had a better dream ahead of me because they envisioned and dreamed about an amphitheater in between the library and the Mongan, and the Mongan building. So we had a graduation there. We created an amphitheater and we had a terrific graduation there was one of six places that we had graduation. There were four other physical places, and I, I, my, my fondest recollection is, is giving those graduation um, diplomas to 549 graduates during my 11 years um, uh, supervising and presiding over graduation. So we all have dreams and, and we have to adjust them. Uh, we know um, I have to mention Sister Miriam. She hasn't been mentioned yet today. She was the founding dean. Uh, she should have been called the president. I don't know what the situation was at the day. We'll let uh, the sisters describe that. But I remember one time when Sister Patricia cleaned out the attic of the play building and she presented me with a big box of Sister Miriam's files. And I just, I don't know if Cheryl knew what I was doing for about a week. I just was kind of holed up in the office reading Sister Miriam's files. So, and I had not met her and I didn't know that much about her, I'd seen her picture. But I knew from reading her files that we were doing things right, we were doing things the way she wanted them to be. Huh. So, um, you know, we don't, we know that we're, that we're dreaming, and we have to keep dreaming for the Chatfield Edge, the, that we've helped fulfill the dreams that I'm sure Angela had in the 16th century, and Julia had in 1845, and, uh, we just have to keep dreaming. So I'm going to continue to support the Chatfield Edge, and I hope you will too. And I didn't use a single tissue. <laughs> yeah. I am. Uh, trust me, I'm a. I'm a. I can be a teary person too, so I completely understand, and I might still use them today, so that's fine. Um, so next we have the dynamic duo. If you were ever here on campus with the two of them, yeah, the energy is off the charts. So um, we have two alumni, a mother-daughter duo, Donna Harbottle and Courtney Fraley. Courtney was class of 2020, and has moved on and Donna was May of 2022 graduate. So they're gonna come up and share with us now. Hi everyone. Good afternoon. I, oh, look at this. It's such a beautiful sight and I can't, I'm just driving down that driveway, that, that does bring back so many memories. It's so beautiful. I think I've even posted a few pictures that everybody's passed along. But uh, here I stand now, 60 years old, and two of my children before me graduated here, and I even got the coveted Julia Chatfield Award because I, I love this place. I loved that it, it felt the purpose in me and gave me the empowerment, empowered me, and helped me to do something that uh, it was for me, my turn, finally. I got to graduate college, I couldn't believe it. I was more than just a mother and a wife and all that, a widow at this point, but um, now I have a business I, and even I have went on to get a career now at the post office, I can't believe it, but still now I'm really in the community. I see everybody every day. <laughs> But uh, I would have never, ever been, had that much confidence in myself. And I find myself uh, going back to my classroom, stuff like Lynn Hansen had, uh, we had a, a women's history class, and different things come up now in life, and, and you, can, you can, you think about them more deeply and strongly when you know the history and background of stuff. You, you just feel so much, I don't know, more stronger as a person when you have knowledge when you can back yourself with knowledge and when you talk and heartfelt love. And I felt so loved here. I loved it. I would have never been able to do this without it. And now I'm so proud of my daughter who went on to Mount St. Joseph and now has bachelor, has a bachelor's degree. So she is the official highest educated person in the family now. <laughs> About that. But we still have our business. 
together. Donna's greenhouse wonders. Mm -hmm. But it's going to be harder to do with this stupid <laughs> working every day now. But I can do it. I can do it. We can do it. Because this, this, this experience right here, I will take to my grave. I love it to death. I could have never, I would have never, my life is so much complete now. And I'm not going to lie, I, I cried when I seen that they were closing. But it, it, I believe I will take a class. I'm one of the, because they can still help me, you know, with my business. Are you done now? I'm done now talking. Okay. <laughs> so the fact that I'm up here is kind of surreal because uh, before I started back in 2018, I think is when that summer is when I started here. If someone would have told me that here, 2023, 2023, yeah, mm -hmm. that we would be, uh, that I would be standing up here to talk in front of everyone about my accomplishments and about Chatfield, I wouldn't have believed it because uh, back then it was a little bit different. Before the confidence, as Sister Doyle says, before the confidence you kind of get ran over by everyone because you don't know your self-worth. You don't know or believe in yourself and what you're capable of. You don't have that confidence to do it or the oomph to kind of take a stand and get there. And even coming here, it took Anthony an entire semester to kind of raise my confidence to come here for just two classes. And then the moment that I took a drive down that to come to my first class, it kind of put me at ease and was made it so much easier to come here. And for me, Chatfield is kind of my beginning and my center. It helped me to get that confidence to be able to go on because before I was just working all the time and it was going nowhere, no career, no nothing. I was 30 years old and had no future really. And then Chatfield happened and now I'm at Mount St. Joe. I've got my bachelor's degree in marketing and working towards my master's, which I will attain in December. And then from there, I'll be able to have a, an entire field and everything is open to me now. And Chatfield is at the center of that. We love Chatfield. But now I am going to complain. I didn't get art. Thank you, ladies. They are terrific. The ladies who have spoken today are alumni. I mean, I just feel like they could take over the world. I feel like you can do so much. Uh, I'm just so proud of all of them. It's, it's wonderful. So our final president, Robert Elmore, has served in that position since 2020 and is staying with us through the transition to the Chatfield Edge. And so now I'm inviting him to come and share some reflections with us also. Well, good afternoon, everyone. I'm so happy that you came. I'm impressed with the turnout, and it's really good to see the support of the community for Chatfield College and moving forward with the Chatfield Edge. Uh, I'm going to share a little bit about my first impressions and personal experiences and rewards of working at Chatfield. Um, but first, I'd like to acknowledge the work that's gone on to build the foundation of this culture of helping one another in the communities improve their lives by my predecessors, the presidents that were before me, the Ursulines before them, and so I just feel like I'm the custodian of that hard work and, and really benefited from all the, the, the stuff that they did to make Chatfield a different place, a better place. Um, my first impressions when I came here over nine years ago uh, was the student-centered approach to what we did with operations. Uh, our strongest attribute consistently has always been uh, mission, as identified by peers, people that have come in from the outside to take a look at what we do. And we've always scored well with that. And I think it's because we are a very mission-focused organization. A lot of people give lip service to mission. We actually practice it here at Chatfield. And I'm so proud of that because it was so different to really see someone pay attention to their mission. And I think mission, if you get mission right, everything else sort of falls into place. And that's why I feel very confident about as we move forward into the Chatfield edge, it's the same mission. We have a few things that we're not going to be doing, but we, a lot of stuff is going to be the same. So that was, that was good. And the other thing was, first impressions, was the culture of getting to know the students, uh, providing support to help them pursue their educational goals. That doesn't always mean classroom support or tutoring. It could be mentoring. It could be other types of encouragement. Uh, maybe that phone call that uh, they received because they weren't in class that morning. Uh, the, 
the interesting part about being in a small college is you can't really escape. We know who you are, we know who your parents are, we know where you live, and we know how to get in touch with you. And so uh, to some, that's a little intimidating, but I think for the most part, students appreciated that as they spent time with us, and it really became a differentiator when, when they would walk across the stage at graduation, or you'd, they'd, we'd read their statements, and they would talk about how that one person may not be their classroom teacher, it may have been a staff person, it may have been somebody walking through, uh, encourage them to stick it out and wouldn't let them give up on themselves. So that, that's a, those are first impressions I received here and it was pretty impressive. From my personal experience, um, it's been very gratifying to know that I made a positive impact at Chatfield to help someone develop professionally or academically. Uh, I've been in positions before where I didn't always feel that way. You sort of are in the grind and you get up and go to work, you go through the motions. It's not that way at Chatfield. Uh, you feel like you have a direct impact in, in what you're going about doing. People listen, uh, you, you listen, and I think it's very important to have that really uh, small collaborative environment. And so it really was another part of uh, Chatfield's vision, mission, and core values that, that we shared. I um, also want to talk about the witness of uh, seeing the work of the invisible hand. Uh, those of you that have been around here for a while, we talk about it, it's inscribed on one of our benches. Um, but I'm telling you, it's true. Uh, I've, I've seen work of the invisible hand at times when you needed it the most, you didn't know what was gonna happen next, but you trust and you put your faith in God and he reveals himself to you through some type of action or plan. And it's happened time and time again, well before I got here, it will continue on. And uh, I, I, I was talking to someone about it uh, recently and, and the comment was, you know, you shouldn't be surprised because there's over 177 years of praying on this, this holy grounds and it, this happens. So if you think about it, yeah, it does happen and it still happens today. So um, that, was a, that was an interesting uh, bit of experience here at Chatfield and I hope uh, many of you have experienced that same type of thing that have been here for a while. And then um, the other thing is um, when other folks come in and they would visit with us, uh, I'd always ask them how they hear about us and uh, yeah, they would tell you, but I'd ask them, what, what made you make that first step and what have you learned so far? What do you, what do you like? What do you dislike? The biggest thing that was a differentiator for us is that the feeling of uh, welcoming, that they felt like it was home, that was a family type of environment. You heard that from some of the previous speakers here today about that personal connection that they get. It's almost instantly. You either, you either feel it when you come in here or you don't. And uh, more times than not, people feel that. And so there's a connection there and a bond that takes place. And, and that's, um, from my experience, that's what it's all about, connecting with people and helping people develop. Uh, I'm a first-generation college student. I didn't know the way. I had to learn it on my own. Uh, my parents were supportive, but they basically said, you've got to figure this out. And so uh, I can resonate with that type of message for our first generation students, and that's why I'm excited about the Chatfield Edge continuing forward in that spirit to be able to give them direction and hope and encouragement along the way. And finally, I'd like to talk about the rewards. Um, the biggest reward is commencement. Uh, the satisfaction of seeing the graduates walk across the stage to receive their diplomas, uh, the, the display of joy that they have in their families. A lot of times they're accomplishing great things in their families. They're the first person to, uh, they graduated high school, and now they've graduated college, and they've got other dreams to move on. And it's not just helping people who had a uh, lack of confidence when they came to Chatfield at the beginning. We have a recent uh, graduate who um, completed Chatfield because they needed some academic challenge. 13-year-old Lucia Scarity graduated Chatfield about two years ago, uh, and now he's in Miami University in the uh, IT program studying art artificial intelligence. He's going to be great. He got to the point, he was a homeschooler, where his mother couldn't keep up with the, the level that he needed in, in terms of challenging academic curriculum. So he came to Chatfield. He blended right in with the Chatfield family, the students, the faculty, the staff. And uh, it was a great story to see how we can help people from all spectrums. And so that's what's unique about Chatfield, is we meet students where they are, no matter where they are. I think um, the, the other item uh, in terms of the rewards are working with a group of people uh, that share the same type of uh, passion for helping others. Uh, and that includes our faculty, staff, our, our supporters, our trustees, and our volunteers. We, 
We utilize a lot of volunteers over the season to help with different events that we plan. Tutoring is one of those mentoring uh, different activities at the campus. So that was really good to see that collaboration and people working together for a common cause, not necessarily working in silos all the time. And then uh, having the uh, opportunity and the responsibility to understand the values and the traditions and the legacy of the Ursulines of Brown County and work to continue the mission they began here over 177 years ago. That's something that I'm passionate about. I feel like there's a trust there, a confidence there, and a, a commitment there to continue this work forward into the future. And so today we honor the work of, and the contributions of Chatfield College in our community, uh, reflecting on the past, but also looking forward to the mission to the continued work of the Chatfield Edge. So it's been a great experience for me, one I will always cherish and fondly remember. And I'd like to thank the Mission Effectiveness, Diversity, and Inclusion Committee for planning this celebration with the support of Kelly Watson, David Hessen, and David Powell. Uh, there's a lot of effort that went into this, months of planning uh, that led up to this, and so you can, you can tell things that are planned really go well, and I really want to appreciate and express my gratitude to, for all the participants, including the musicians who are uh, helping uh, with, with this celebration. So in closing, I want to leave two expressions that are dear to me. One is from St. Angelo Marici, and it goes like this. If according to times and needs, you should be obligated to make fresh rules and change current things, do it with prudence and good advice. And I think we've demonstrated that as we've transitioned from the Chatfield Edge, I mean from the Chatfield College to the Chatfield Edge. And the second one is from uh, my predecessor, John Teferro. He didn't mention it, so I will, but he said this a lot, and it resonates with me. Uh, working at Chatfield is like, uh, it's, it's a different experience. It's a nonprofit, and as you know, the pay is low, the hours are long, the frustrations are many, it's the best job I've ever had, and I couldn't say it any better. So thank you all for being here, and I appreciate your, your response. Well, no Chatfield celebration would be complete without <laughs> the alma mater. So John Teferro is here also. It's one of his favorites. And uh, we have invited uh, Suzanne Hamilton, another friend of Chatfield, um, who has agreed to come today. She's going to lead us in it, work with us a little bit with it. And, you know, that's the plan. And, uh, and... <laughs> get us going with that. So the alma mater is printed in your program, the words and music, so you'll be able to uh, follow along. So I'm going to turn it over to Suzanne. Take it away.
Well, Suzanne, you might be winning me over. You might be changing my mind. <laughs> Thank you for that. So Chatfield College has closed, but the mission continues. And the next few minutes, we would just like to share with you a little bit about the Chatfield Edge and where we're going in the future. The very back page of your program gives you a little bit of information about the Chatfield Edge and, and what's happening with that. And those of us who are here working with it are, are going to share with you a little bit about, about that. So I would like to invite uh, Bob Elmore back up in a new role now um, to talk a little bit uh, briefly about the transition and, and how that came about. Well, thank you, David. Um, we, we've always been mission focused, as I mentioned earlier, and uh, we have also been challenged uh, as a small college uh, financially, and uh, we were on a, on a path that was not sustainable. And we tried to figure out how we could you know, continue delivering mission uh, in a, in a really sustainable way going forward well into the future. And so I asked the executive committee of the board and the board itself to get involved in a process of studying you know, where we're at and what our options are moving forward. And it took about a year and a half to work through that process. And um, I'm pleased that we were able to figure it out. And it was sort of right in front of our face all along. It's all about mission. Uh, we don't have to be a college to deliver the mission that we deliver to support students. They can take their English composition anywhere, but the one part that is unique that's different for Chatfield as opposed to other institutions is we're going to help them along the way, hand by hand, uh, step by step, whatever it takes. We've got the resources and the experience uh, back to the, uh, the Ursuline tradition and the 51 years the college was in existence. That's what we did. And uh, we'll continue doing that. So uh, it was rather eye-opening in that this is our pathway forward. It's sustainable. It fits within the mission. As Sister Ellen mentioned, it goes full circle in that we're trying to develop the whole person in the communities that we're in. So uh, to answer some of, the, some of the questions that have come up in the meantime since we've made this public and transitioned away from the college to the Chatfield Edge is um, the the fact that we're going to be here in this community. We have no plans to um, divest of anything here. As a matter of fact, we want to see this become more robust, uh, more active than it has been in the past. And I think without the pressure of uh, the operating the college and the deficits that it was under, that structure is gone. So we have the, the flexibility now to be able to develop this. We also want to have a presence in this over the Rhine community. And so we still have our building there. We do plan on selling the building, but we do have other spaces that we can uh, use to meet people and have a presence in the Cincinnati community, and that's high on our priority list, too. So we're not abandoning markets. We're not abandoning buildings. We're not abandoning mission or scope. Uh, we could, we're doubling down in that we're turning the, the page to a new chapter of how Chatfield Edge operates and, and the organization overall operates. And I'm, I'm pleased to say that the initial response from the community at large and from different uh, uh, constituents that we've been talking to are very positive. If from the collegiate level, uh, there's work out there to be done. Uh, you think the public schools have all the resources and can address this need of helping students uh, achieve post-secondary education? They can't. The need is much greater than that. There are other nonprofits that are doing similar work. Uh, there's the workload's too busy, and they might have one component of it covered, but not all of it covered. We cover everything because of our experience as a college. So I'm pleased with the direction that we're going, and we're already active. Uh, we've been in a quiet period as we closed the college down, but the Chatfield Edge has been busy. We have students out at different institutions right now utilizing Chatfield scholarships and other gap funding and mentoring, and we'll continue building that and marketing that and getting the word out about Chatfield over the next year. Uh, so that people understand what it is that we, we can do, how we can help them, and we're not just limiting it to college, it's for any post-secondary en endeavor. So that's important to note too, we were very deliberate about that. We think uh, the, the, the landscape's changing, people have different options in life, and so we don't wanna be restrictive, we wanna be open and inclusive when it comes to helping people in whatever they choose to do. So uh, what I would like to do is turn it over to David to talk about 
what work the Chatfield Edge is involved with when it comes to the students in attending these institutions. And then Kelly Watson will come forward and talk about how you can get involved uh, to support the Chatfield Edge. So as Bob said, the Chatfield Edge has already been working and going. And we've been doing a lot of behind the scenes preparation, but uh, we do have eight students who are currently attending schools that are on Chatfield scholarships. They are attending Southern State, Cincinnati State, NKU, and Mount St. Joe. Um, and those transitions all happened. We met with the um, college officials and communicated with them about how best to get the scholarship monies to them and, and worked through all those transitions. Um, we also had, for example, and this is typical of what will happen with the Chadfield Edge, uh, a student who, because of family need, who had been a commuter student here at Chadfield, uh, needed to live on campus uh, for for her new school, um, but didn't quite have the funds to get everything together to live on campus. That's a, big, that's a big move, a big transition. So we were able to supply her with dorm materials so that she could get her dorm room set up, cleaning supplies, laundry supplies, all those types of things that a lot of times you don't think about are important when you go away and you need to have that. That's what the Chatfield Edge will be doing. Now, these eight students were already with us. They were already part of Chatfield, so we haven't taken them from the very beginning. But what we will do is take students like that from the very beginning. They haven't even applied to college yet, and we can help them figure that out, how to navigate that system. First-generation college students, it can be very, very difficult. I wasn't a first-generation college student, and when my daughter went to college, it still was frustrating, you know? The FAFSA, I was still pulling my hair out. And I had experienced it myself, I already knew about it. Imagine if you have had no experience with it. it it's very daunting. Uh, and also, for many of you and many of us, it is surprising what will cause a student to stop their journey. What we think of as a small thing. I can't get to the campus to do a campus visit. And they're done. There's a, an organization that we have, have been following and they have the story of a person who um, was very bright, very capable, got a full ride to a prestigious university and everything was good. He, he almost stopped because he couldn't afford the bus ticket to get to the school, to get the full ride scholarship, and he was going to quit. That one thing. If we can help with those things, that's, that's a big deal. But we don't just stop there, we keep going. A lot of organizations get you to college and, and congratulate you and, and sort of move on. But we want to stay with them through graduation. The first semester, that's tough, right? That first break when you go home and then are you going back? Are you not going back? That's also tough. We're gonna stick with you, you know, just like we did here at Chatfield College when we were small. Uh, you're not getting rid of us that easily. So we're still gonna be checking in on you and talking to you and offering you support. Some, of, some people around know I'm, a, I'm an old theater person and one of my favorite songs is You'll Never Walk Alone. That is who we are. You are not walking through this by yourself. We are actively involved in you and in your community. And by you being successful in your goals, whatever that is, to be a nurse, to be a carpenter, to go to a four-year school, whatever that is, by you being successful in your life, you then better your community, uh, whatever community that happens to be. And so we build stronger communities that way, and then we build Volunteers, servant leaders is one of the pillars of the Chatfield Edge, which you can see there. And that's to encourage them to take opportunities to volunteer and give back. And we will be very active in, in providing those types of opportunities with them. I want to just briefly talk a little bit about some of those intangibles that drive us in the Chatfield Edge. William Faulkner said, one of my favorite quotes, the past is never dead. It's not even past. That is how I feel about the mission. I'm about to get the John Tafaro Kleenex out here. <laughs> I loved what Sister Ellen said about things coming full circle. And I really, really 
want to assure you, we do not take that mission lightly. We very much take it seriously. Every day, we are living it and planning for it and working for it. Um, it is part of who we are. So the history, the mission, the legacy, they are the foundations of what we do. I've been in education a long time, uh, over 30 years, if you can believe it. And while the times have changed from me using uh, a round purple ink copy machine when I first started teaching and chalkboards, of course, I'd come home covered in chalk dust. Uh, times have changed, technology has changed, all of society has changed, but the people have not changed. The students haven't changed. We all crave support. We all crave community. We all, cra we all have that uncertainty as a young person of, can I do this? I don't know, I'm not sure. I'm... And as I used to talk with students, you know, and they would say, I'm not sure. And I would say, before long, you're gonna be busy having to pay bills and how am I gonna do that? And, and, get a, and I have a mortgage and I have these kids and you just lose sight of what it is you wanted to do. And then, you know, hopefully something like the Chatfield Edge can come along so that Donna Harbottle can say, it's my turn, you know, and this is something I always wanted to do. We're here to help with that, right? We are here to guide you with that. So we covet your prayers every day, and I know that um, it has reassured me through the years when Sister Patricia would come and do blessings for the students, and she would say, the Ursulines are praying for you. We pray for you every day. And I you know, hope that all of you will continue to do that, but we could use your help and involvement in other ways. And Kelly Watson, who's our Director of Development, who a lot of you know is gonna come up and speak just about a couple of ways that you can share and be involved with all of that. So I just, like to ask everyone to remember your Chatfield days. There are so many members of the Chatfield family I see out in the audience, board members, alumni, members of the community, former faculty, former staff, and we're all here at this moment together because we love Chatfield and how it has transformed our lives, how it has built community with us and, and for us. And I ask you to remember the spirit of that and help us continue it forward, continue the mission of the Ursulines of Brown County forward through the Chatfield Edge. We need you. We need you to help us continue moving forward. And the way that you can do that is the way you've done it all along. And that is with gifts of yourself through your time and your talent and your treasure. We need volunteers to help us serve the students who we will serve through the Chatfield Edge. And many of you have been volunteers before, mentors before. I see some of you in the audience who have served in that role. Please consider joining us again in that role. We have, we have new work to do. Those of you who have been involved with scholarships at Chatfield College, I see you in the audience as well. Stay with us with those scholarships. We have students who need them and and that is one way that the Chapel Edge will continue to open educational opportunities for students from all walks of life. And we need uh, your donations, as always, your contributions, your gifts. Every dollar makes an impact and, and helps to make the work possible, helps to keep this beautiful place vibrant and, and nurtured and loved. So if you'd like to continue your work with Chatfield through the Chatfield Edge uh, as a volunteer or in some other way as a mentor, as a donor, contact 
contact David or Bob or me and um, we'll get you started because we need you. And um, when I started at Chatfield, I came from a place, um, I didn't really have a very strong uh, faith, a uh, very strong religious schooling at all. And uh, uh, when I learned I'd be working for a faith-based organization, I didn't really know what that meant and it scared me. And then, you know, to, we, we pray before meetings and the prayer is always part of how we at Chatfield approach things. That was very, uh, it was very different for me. And um, I know that I have grown in my faith through my time at, at Chatfield. And I think it's because of the very gentle way that the Ursulines teach faith. It's not, I learned faith is different than religion. And things can go wrong with religion. A lot of bad things have been done in the name of religion. I don't know if that's true, if bad things, a lot of bad things have been done in the name of faith. And one of the, uh, my education <laughs> here at Chatfield has been Aunt St. Angela's Daily Words of Wisdom. Many of us get them in our inbox every day. And, um, one of them, you know, they come around uh, and you, you see the same ones, you know, once in a while. And, and the one that's coming to mind right now, and I'm sorry, I'm probably going to completely butcher this so I can be corrected after, <laughs> Sister Patricia. But, you know, united in heart and mind, we stand like a mighty fortress. So let us be united in heart and mind in the spirit of Chatfield and continue the work of, of, of this place and, and continue helping to transform lives for the better. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. So to close, uh, this portion of our journey and bless us as we move forward. I first want to recognize and thank all of the Ursuline sisters that are in attendance today. We are honored to have all of you here. They are sitting up here in the front row. Some of you I haven't even met yet, but I'm still excited and honored that you have joined us today. Um, so I'm going to invite Sister Patricia Holman, who is the Congregational Minister of the Order, to come forward. She's going to, with the sisters, lead us in a blessing. Um, after the blessing is concluded, the ceremony is concluded also, and then we invite you all to come to the Welcome Center uh, for a reception, and you can chat and share and talk with people and all those wonderful good things. Again, we are so thankful that you came today uh, to honor Chatfield and all that it's done and all that it's going to continue to do. The Ursulines of Brown County were founded by strong women of faith who believed in education. They dedicated their lives to the challenges of providing life changing lessons and growth-filled opportunities for their students. The Chatfield Edge continues the 177-year legacy of Julia Chatfield and her companions. The Chatfield Edge is imbued with the Ursuline traditions that reflect gospel values, supports the potential of each individual person, fosters spiritual development, and inspires committed service. The Chatfield Edge will empower those who seek our services. It is a privilege for the Ursulines of Brown County to bless this new endeavor. And so I invite the Ursulines who are with us this afternoon to stand and join in this blessing knowing that those who have gone before us and those who are unable to be with us today are here in spirit. 
And so let us pray. Loving, gracious God, may the patient endurance of Julia Chatfield and her companions be with the Board of Trustees as they move into future choices and challenges. May the gift of courage modeled by Julia Chatfield enable the staff and volunteers to nurture students through respect, integrity, and justice. May the determination and perseverance of Sister Miriam inspire the mentors and tutors to empower our students who seek an education that will generate success in their lives. May the enthusiasm of St. Angela's spirit grow within the Chatfield Edge, helping the enrolled participants to live vibrant, productive lives. May the steady light of the Spirit's wisdom within each participant remind them every day of the power of God's presence. May God bless each of us as we inaugurate the Chatfield Edge. May God's face shine upon us and be gracious to us in this endeavor. May God grant each of us peace and hope. Amen.